Welcome to ESD School, brought to you by Attract. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a single episode. Enjoy the video. Uh, dear all, uh, long time no see, sorry. So we, we, we will uh, here discuss about a new, very important key point of uh, ESD, uh, which is the trimming. Uh, for me, uh, trimming is a very important key to open the space. So every time we will discuss about trimming, you will see this key showing what it helps to do and what it uh, um, bring with uh, this uh, very important step. So here, uh, all the things that we already treated in gray, and now we are talking about trimming. Next, uh, on the theoretical point of view, Trimming is here to open the submucosal space. We will discuss about its technical aspect, um, how we can anticipate this training to help your strategy. And practically, we will show two training exercises to help your trimming and one example about, about uh, one trimming procedure. So first, what is theoretically the benefit of trimming? Uh, for doing a good trimming, you need a good injection and a good incision. So spend time for uh, seeing these two episodes uh, previously uh, shown on the ESD school. So first, trimming is something that after the incision will open the space. Because uh, when you do your incision, it's impossible to insert the scope in the submucosal space. Your incision is too small, the space is too small, and it's impossible with a 0.4 knife uh, needle to have an incision that creates a space of 9.8 millimeter, for example, for an upper GI scope. So there is a discordance in between the size of your incision with a very small needle knife compared to what you need to enter a scope into the submucosa. And this difference, uh, which allow to enter the space, is the trimming. But what the hell is trimming? So trimming is the important point that makes the space open. In fact, when you do your incision, your needle is 0.4 millimeters, so the space is very small. And you will change the axis of your knife to cut the first submucosal fibers, open this submucosa, and therefore separate the two mucosal edges by improving the space. This will be repeated, and, then and therefore it will open the space, and progressively your scope will be able to enter in the submucosa. This is an example of trimming with a dual knife. So we inject first. Uh, the first step is always the incision that you will try to do with a smile, a smile shape because uh, when it's round and uh, open, it will be easier to enter into um, the submucosal area. So you do your incision like usual. But when you see your incision just now, you will check it's very small. The space is very small. And somewhere you have some whitish uh, fibers, which uh, in fact are... Uh, remaining uh, muscularis mucosa fibers. And there you will try to repeat um, a kind of under mucosa incision, just under your mucosa, and you change the axis to go uh, to the lesion uh, target, and you open the space progressively. This is the trimming. I mean, it will make feasible to enter with your cap under the submucosa. So you have created a space that is uh, accessible for a, a, an endoscope. Also, at the beginning, it was impossible. So second point, we will see the, the technical aspects of this trimming. So first, uh, we already saw it uh, during the incision uh, episode, but in fact, doing a very, very perpendicular incision is not really a good idea because you will have a very small space, difficult to work. If you manage to do a puckering, an unfolding of the mucosa, 
you will have a better uh, incision because um, it will do a, a kind of incision and trimming at the same time, doing a larger uh, incision and doing a part of trimming um, from the beginning. So you, you see it, if you are puckering, folding the mucosa, your incision is larger because you, you are doing at the same time both incision and trimming by cutting the first submucosal space. So it is a goal, try to do something which is not perfectly perpendicular, but a little fold in order to cut the first submucosal fibers at the same time. A second technical point is to, to do differently your incision when you try to push with the cap uh, to stay in contact with the mucosa and have a, a very smooth movement. Um, when you are doing the trimming, your goal is to have a more tangential approach and a more uh, distant access in order to create really uh, a curve that will uh, cut all the submucosa under your muc mucosal incision. I show you here an example. If you are pushing on the area, it's very difficult to access. But if you work a little more far without pushing with uh, the cap, it's easier to, to see where you are going and uh, to do your trimming in order to open the space. So here I put my cap on the mucosa to avoid movement, but I'm not pushing on the, the targeted area where I want to remove the lesion. I'm a little more far in order to see the direction where I want to go and to avoid closure of the area I want to open. If I'm pushing on it, I close the space. If I work a little more far, I will be able to choose uh, the area. And once I can go under, uh, it's easier. But when the space is not enough open, open, uh, you have to take little more distance in order to be able to um, uh, open and do your trimming uh, correctly. Next, uh, your trimming as the different uh, part should be anticipated by an architect to help the strategy. When uh, the area is uh, difficult to, to access, it is always better to do your trimming in retroflexion if possible, because the trimming will be in the good direction. But if it's not possible, you will do your trimming, but in the, in the bad way, I, I, I guess, uh, you will not be able to cut under the lesion. So, Whenever it's possible, retroflexion is better because your incision and your trimming goes to the area you want to dissect. But uh, if it's not possible, you should do your trimming, uh, even if it's inverted, because if you don't perform it, it will be difficult to achieve the resection at the end because the space um, at the, the, the last part of the procedure will be uh, uh, relatively difficult because the space is not open. So even if retroflexion is not possible, please try to do a trimming. Inverted trimming, it's not perfect, but at least there is a trimming to open the space and facilitate the end of the procedure. Don't do only the incision without trying to open the space because it will be very difficult to achieve the resection once again, but also to fix your traction on the oral edge of the lesion because you have no space and you have a risk of taking both the edge and the surrounding area or to catch the muscle because you have not worked enough to open the space. Another point which is important during the trimming phase on the opposite way is that you will cut also some vessels. Uh, and in fact, you are avoiding by doing it uh, pros prospectively and preventively, you will avoid bleeding during the end uh, part of the procedure uh, because you see the vessel at the beginning during your, your trimming. Also, if you treat the vessel by coming from the blind area, you have a risk of damage and of bleeding at the end of the procedure. So once again, 
if it's not possible to do it in retroflexion, please try to do your trimming uh, in direct viewing, even if it's inverted. Next thing, uh, trimming is also very important to uh, facilitate the uh, traction placement because if the space is not open, you have a high risk of catching uh, the muscle during your, your closure of clip. If the space is more large, it will be easier. So if the space is reduced, risk of catching the muscle. If you have a free edge, less risk of catching the muscle. This is the trimming that opens the space. Same for lateral areas. Uh, it is uh, sometimes difficult to fix the traction on the lateral edges because the space is very small. By doing uh, a lateral trimming like this, uh, you will try to do a kind of uh, oblique uh, trimming like this. Uh, you slide, but in fact, you are really opening the space, uh, making it larger to facilitate the work after um, to, to fix your traction and to achieve the two lateral edges of your lesion. So please do your trimming everywhere. Uh, I mean, on the opposite way, uh, uh, even if it's inverted, but also on the lateral edges to open the space and make visibility better. Next, training exercise. One uh, which is very important, I think, is the smile shape uh, exercise. Uh, it seems nothing, but in fact, it's the beginning of everything. So on model, uh, isolated stomach or even endogel or what you want, uh, it's easy to do a, a very tiny incision and then to open it to make a, a, a nice uh, uh, smile. Uh, laughing out loud, in fact, in fact, you don't want to have a very close smile. You want something which is larger. Uh, the second exercise, which is very important, is uh, this target exercise. Uh, you will try to uh, follow always the center of your target. It means you will always try to change the axis of your scope to do your trimming in the axis of the center. Uh, it is a difficult movement uh, where you want to do a torquing. Uh, you have also to adjust up and, um, and uh, down a, a row. But it's very important if you try uh, and if you manage to do it because your trimming and your di dissection will always be uh, directed to the center of the lesion and uh, not in a bad um, uh, axis. So the best way to achieve the resection is to always try to go to the center because you will make your resection uh, faster. And finally, an example uh, of a procedure in the column to, uh, to show you a trimming. Incision have been done. And once again, we try uh, to cut uh, as much as possible the first fibers uh, repeating this, um, this movement. So as, as we said, you should work a little far from the lesion in order to avoid compression of the area you want to open. Uh, if possible, you try to keep an axis that goes to the center. Here, it's not very easy on the lateral edges, uh, but um, progressively, the space is opening and uh, progressively, it's really easy to enter into the submucosal space uh, with the scope. And uh, once we will decide to fix the multipolar traction strategy uh, uh, with um, any uh, traction device, uh, it will be really easy to catch the edge without catching the muscle. So here, in fact, you do your trimming first, and then you can repeat the same movement um, a lot of time to improve the space and make easier the access to the submucosa. So in conclusion, trimming is unavoidable uh, because uh, it's impossible to really access the submucosa and therefore do submucosal dissection without having an access to the submucosa. And therefore, after your very small incision, you should increase the space by enlarging your incision to access the submucosa. Uh, a perfect trimming enlarges the space but also allows to go deeper 
uh, in the submucosa. And as you know, there are less vessels in the deep submucosa than in the shallow area close to the muscularis mucosa. So even if the vessels are bigger, it will be easier to manage uh, some big vessels, um, but not a lot, than doing a, a lot of small coagulation in very, very shallow uh, small vessels. So please go deeper, close to the muscle. It makes the resection easier. And also trimming will help you to fix your traction device. In fact, this um, uh, step, which appear like a, a loss of time at the beginning, because you have done your incision, you want to put your traction. But in fact, doing this period of trimming, it will take some minutes, but in fact, it will allow everything to be easier in the different step of the procedure, like putting traction or achieving the resection. Thank you very much. I hope uh, it, will, uh, it will be very good for you uh, and it will help you to, to work specifically uh, this streaming. And uh, the next uh, meeting is uh, probably during Endogastro Live, uh, where we will discuss of the 10 key points which are really important to, to perform an ESD. So please join us for the, the ESD meeting in English during Endogastro Live. Uh, uh, and uh, thanks a lot for being here with, uh, with this channel. Thank you.